think and grow rich. In the Nikin business, we've got a lot of things that you can grow into, like uh, eat and grow healthy, as an example. Uh, the five pillars, if you do them, uh, you'll grow towards that. And one of my favorite thoughts about growing is when I'm green, I'm growing. But when I'm ripe, I'll soon be rotten. So I hope you guys are in a mood for growth. We've got Jeff Isom, who is involved in Nikan University, and that's all about growth, humans being more. So let's go for it. Jeff, uh, talk to us. Well, Dave, you're right. That book, Think and Go Rich, has been such an important work. Uh, Napoleon Hill, who wrote the book, was inspired by Andrew Carnegie, who one is, was one of the most famous business people of his day, decided to create this work that really allowed people to get exactly what they wanted, what they wanted to create in their life. It's really an amazing work. But probably the primary, the most important aspect of his book, Think and Grow Rich, is the idea of the law of attraction. And this idea, the law of attraction, states that you literally attract those things into your life that you think about, that you focus on most of the time. And I think that's a, such an important law for people who are building a business, who are developing themselves, who want to create something that they use this law in their lives. The idea of focusing on, thinking about exactly what it is that you want. So I thought we might spend some time today talking about the law of attraction. Have you seen the law of attraction work or be important or be powerful in your business, Dave? Oh, I would say probably only day, probably only every day, uh, probably almost every instant, really. Uh, pretty much everything that we look around and see was originally someone's thought. And, and the powerful thing about something like Nikan and so many things that are, are big and great that were accomplished by people, it was first the idea of one person's mind and then other people got caught up in that same vision and the bigger the thing, uh, the bigger the vision, the more it requires other people to uh, catch that vision. And so this is really appropriate what we're talking about because then you can, we really do want to change the world. We have some powerful ideas that, uh, well, whose time has come and this, this is the moment and we hope that you'll share in our idea and it will change you. Well, something that we might help people then look at doing today, Dave, is the idea of creating a focus statement. Something that will help them to actively use the law of attraction in their lives. And a focus statement essentially has three parts. One, it looks at your chief desire, what it is you want most of all. What is your you might say your obsession, what you are driven to obtain or achieve or create in your life, your chief desire. The second part of a focus statement is deciding what you will exchange for that chief desire. You know, in life, nothing is for free. We don't receive by giving nothing. There's always an exchange that takes place. And so figuring out what you will exchange, what knowledge, what wisdom, what ideas, uh, what kinds of talents that you will give, what added value you will give to other people's lives, how you improve others' lives. Figuring out what it is you will give in exchange for that chief desire is important. And then finally, coming up with a plan, with a plan how you will implement that exchange, how you will actually add that value, what are the steps you will actually take to bring about that exchange and obtaining that chief desire. So I thought we might look at those three ideas, you and I, in a, in a discussion. And look at the idea of creating a focus statement, something they can read every single day, every morning and night, to really focus their thoughts, focus their attention on their chief desire and their plan of action. It's what they're created. What would you say, and this might be a tough question, what would you say is a chief desire that people often have that bring them to a business like, like me, Ken? That is a really good question. I could probably start with myself. When, when I looked at Nikan, I was 40 years old. I already had quite a bit of life's experience as far as work and, and 
basically, I think one of the things we have to accept is, is the reality of work. That's the way the world has been set up, and also this great discovery that I, I think all of us have made is not all work is created equal. Some work is more fun than others. Uh, some work definitely, uh, I think, has a, a higher sense of mission, uh, where, where you feel like what you do really matters in the scheme of the of the rest of the world, and and also just the fundamental idea that uh, some some work is fun when you really find your passion, uh, in that in a real sense you don't work anymore. It, it, usually, a lot of people define work as uh, just by definition as something you don't want to do, and how. However, the people that are really, really successful, the ones that accomplish a lot, uh, they never think about that. They're not looking at the time clock. Uh, they're on fire. They're, they're passionate. And uh, that's indistinguishable work and, and play. And, and they're just full, fully immersed in that. And, and, that's, and that's what I was looking for. I, I feel kind of in my own mind, uh, I think we we all are looking for happiness, and and how do we attain happiness? I, I think some of the the fundamental things about happiness and success is is we need other people. We we need relationships. It's in our our friendships and relationships where our greatest happiness and and fulfillment in life are, are found. And and I thought I I want I want my work to be that. I don't want to be just stuck in some cubicle or or. Uh, at a work center, a machine shop, making parts, uh, and I never interact with anybody. I, I want to be out there, uh, actually being being in action, uh, do, doing something, and being being a person of influence. That, that's what I was looking for. Basically, in, in a nutshell, when I was uh, looking for Nikan, uh, kind of burned into my mind was I, I needed to make more money. Uh, I wanted to wake up every morning excited about something wonderful to do, and I, I just wanted to make a huge difference. I wanted to impact people, and, and specifically, I had a really interest in natural health products, and so I was actually looking for a company that might have something along that line, and uh, when I found Nikan, it was a, a eureka moment. I just thought, wow, this, this is everything that I've ever dreamed of, and plus the ability to bring a lot of people along with me by, by sharing it. It's uh, this this has just been been my dream. You know that's something I hear people talk about all the time, as their chief desires. The things you've mentioned, this idea of having financial freedom, being able to support yourself financially and to live the kind of life you want to have, the kind of work that provides significance, meaning, importance to somebody's life. That's often a chief desire working in a health and wellness industry, improving people's health and, and, and the quality of their life is something that's often a driving force. So it's really important, I think, just as you mentioned, all of those things drew you to me, Ken, and it's important to identify those things, to know what your chief desire is. Because when you have that chief desire just strongly embedded in your consciousness, in your mind, it seeps down into your subconsciousness and your thoughts, your focus, your ideas then are constantly directed towards what it is you want to do, what it is you want to have, what it is you want to create most with your life. So people absolutely need to identify what that is, their chief desire. The second step then, once you've done that, is to figure out what you will exchange, what you will give in terms of your talents, your gifts, your leadership ability, in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your enthusiasm, how you'll improve other people's lives, what value you will add. It's deciding what you'll exchange for those chief desires, for that financial freedom, that significance, that meaning that you're working on creating. What, what did you see as kind of the principal things that you would exchange for getting that financial freedom, for obtaining that significance and meaning through the work that you were giving? What what were you going to bring to the table? And I when know I, a lot of I know a lot of people pattern their lives after yours, Dave, because you have been extremely successful. So when people think about what they're going to bring to the table, what did you bring to the table that made you worthy of receiving those good things, those chief desires that you had? Well, one of the things that happened when I saw Nikan in a very real 
personal, very special way, I felt that Nikin was an answer to my prayers. And one of the parables is uh, about the, the the talents, where the master went and saw three servants, and you know gave them uh, various uh, numbers of talents, and and two of them, when he came back, had multiplied those talents, and and uh, you know well done, thou faithful and good servant, and everything. Uh, the other uh, servant buried his, didn't do anything with it, and uh, he was really chastised, thou wicked and slothful servant. And when I thought about Nikan, uh, this was something that I was, uh, I, I was daily petitioning. That, that was in my daily prayers. Please help me to find my life's mission. I, I was desperate, and in a very special way, I felt this was an answer, and I thought, I don't know about these servants in the parable if they actually went and said, give, give me something to work with. Or if uh, the master just came and said, "Here, uh, here's something for you to do," and but but I knew that I'd been actually asking, and I'd been giving, I'd been given, I, I believe, a ten talent company. It was it was beyond my wildest expectations, and I thought, uh, if this is a stewardship, if this is a, a mission uh, given to me, uh, something that I'd been asking for, and here it was. I, I better be well, uh, well done, thou good and faithful, rather than wicked and slothful. <laughs> and so I, I approached Nikin as, as with that thought. Another thing is I, I was on fire. I, I just I was so inspired by this. I thought, uh, you know, I've never seen anything more exciting than this. And I remember it right at that moment, looking back over my life about a lot of other things that I'd done, where I really wasn't inspired. And, and realizing that because of that, I'd held back. And, and I just kind of thought in my mind, uh, how fast can I run if I run as fast as I can? How fast would that be? I, I didn't know at that point. And, and one of my great fears was to just kind of drift aimlessly through life, never catching fire, uh, never really being full-hearted in anything, and eventually to die I was still with maybe half a tank of gas, never using myself up in something. And I just thought, what? I, since I've asked for this, this is my moment. I am going to run as fast as I can and just see how good I am, see what my capabilities are. And, and with that, I was blessed with uh, not my sponsor. He really didn't know too much, and our personalities didn't match perfectly anyway. But his sponsor, I really liked him. Uh, his personality, the way he did the business, Everything about that, the way he treated people, I thought that's how I want to do it. And he had already made twenty thousand dollars in a month selling magnets from Japan. And I thought, you know, one of the greatest shortcuts a person can take is learn from the experts. We don't have enough time to invent everything ourselves. If we can already find a track to run on, and so I just jumped in his back pocket, called him every day, uh, worked with him. And, and then thought of this as a sense of mission, that uh, this was something really important, and I was, I was just going to give up my all, uh, uh, just total 100%. Uh, uh, John Wooden, the, the great coach, uh, he, he talks about make each day your masterpiece. Uh, that, 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 that day, uh, today, is, is the only day we have. And, and just make it really count. If you only do half, you can't make it up tomorrow. You can't do 150%. We can only do 100%. And so each day that comes and goes, if we don't give it all, uh, we, we've, we've lost that moment. And the thing that's so astonishing and so wonderful is almost everybody that's successful, all it is is just doing certain things a certain way again and again and again and letting uh, that, that power of, of accumulation which is absolutely astonishing, especially when you look at the Nikan compensation plan, these products, how it compounds by teaching other people how to teach those people how to teach those people, and so you can you can really get something going if you first catch fire so that you can ignite a few other people and in turn really get a fire burning. And so so that, that was my thought. I'm, I'm just going to give it my all. In fact, maybe, maybe just to kind of... Uh, Perhaps take some of your thunder. When I first got in this, I, I, I was familiar with Think and Grow Rich, and to just kind of nail this a little bit more, there was an interview uh, that H.L. Hunt, who was a, a self-made billionaire in the oil industry, uh, years ago in an interview, he, he said, what, what is the key to success? And, and he said, basically, first off, just decide what you want to do. 
And, and I think that's one of the great problems is most people, they, they wander through life without ever really making a firm decision in what they want to do. And, and they look around and other people are doing the same thing and, and, uh, and so they just kind of wander aimlessly. Like I've heard it said most people are just wandering around to save on uh, funeral expenses. Uh, they're, they're dead, but they're uh, wandering around. Uh, uh, the next thing is, as you mentioned, you, you need to, to pay a price. And, and so you need to, to just decide, I, I've got to give up something. But, you know, in the scheme of things, the, the best way to look at sacrifice, especially in terms of building an Ecan business, is if you look at uh, sacrifice in terms of, of being willing to give up something of value, but something of actually lesser value, and in turn you're going to get something in greater value, which is usually how sacrifice works. Is, is it's actually a bargain because uh, either way you pay the price and if you just uh, think you know I don't think I'm gonna do this I, I'm just gonna uh, live my life out in uh, cautious mediocrity I'm not gonna really try anything hard uh, you you will pay a price for that and I think in Nikan you're going to enjoy a price by, by doing this and so that that's the thing and, th and then HL hunt number three is uh, go to work. Just just go do it. Find, find out what the activity is that's necessary and then just go do lots of it. And the thing I love about Nikan is it's something that you can really be excited about. It doesn't feel like work and, and when it's really fun and there's a joy in it, you can do lots of it. And then just uh, never, ever, ever give up. Get started, keep going, and, and allow those days, day after day, of doing the right activities to accumulate. And, and things happen. So anyway, that, that might be more than you asked for, but that's, that's what I did and still doing it. Yeah, I, no, I think that's really amazing. I mean, identifying those specifics that you'll give in exchange, it's absolutely necessary to know what those things are. So giving your time, your talents, your passion, your enthusiasm, those are things that everyone can find inside themselves. They can find those things to exchange for those cheap desires they're looking for. Uh, I really like how you explained how implementing all of those would make that happen. And, and pretty much anybody that's really, really successful, uh, just, just the, the very idea of, of this example, six-figure income. If you know anybody that's making six figures, they, they work more than nine to five. They work hard and just kind of settle on the fact that uh, the, the the people that are actually happiest are those that are involved. They're not on the dole. They're not just laying around waiting for something to happen. They're, they're actually the best way to create uh, the future is, is, is to go out and do things. That, that's how you predict the future is, is you create it yourself. And, and uh, when I got into this, I thought, I've, I've got to launch my business. And I, I told my wife and my children, I says, hey, you're, you're, you're not going to see me for a few months a lot because I, I got to get out there and make it happen. It's just like uh, when, when we launched our business, we lived uh, in, in Pasco, Washington. And, uh, you know, in the summertime, if you got up to go potty in middle middle of the night, you could look out there in the fields and you would see uh, headlights. You know, they actually put headlights on tractors. And the reason is when it's time to cut, hey, you, you do that. and. You know, later on, that farmer, they might be in Hawaii in the wintertime, but to when, when the crop is ready, they're, they're out there doing it. They're, they're, it isn't 5 o'clock and they think, well, it's, uh, it's time, time to go home and, and uh, get a bite to eat and watch a little TV. No, they're, they're out there until it gets done, and that's the, one, that, that's the attitude you want to do when you're, when you're building your own businesses. It's not employee mentality, uh, but ownership mentality, performance mentality. Think of yourself as being in an opportunity that's based on uh, performance. So when you think about, when you identify those things you'll exchange, that knowledge, wisdom, expertise you have, your passion, your excitement, your enthusiasm, the leadership you'll provide to others, when you think about what it is you'll exchange, you've identified your chief desire, what you're going to exchange for that chief desire, the final, the third, the last step comes, Dave. And sometimes this is the one that people find the most challenging. It's coming up with that actual plan 
to put into action your passions, your knowledge, your wisdom, your ability to lead. It's the actual plans for you know, putting the boots to the road and making those things happen. And this can maybe sometimes be you know, the longest part of the process, really coming up with those actions that will allow you to specifically implement on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, what it is you are exchanging for that chief desire. But that absolutely has to happen. And you've talked a little bit about it here today, but can you give us some ideas coming up with this third step where we're implementing the law of attraction and the law of attraction does work with thoughts. It can work with our thoughts and our focus, but our thoughts and focus when we're constantly thinking about or focused on something, it translates into action. Action comes from those thoughts, those focus, focus, that obsession that we have. So what are some of the actions that somebody who's building a business needs to look at taking? I know there can be a lot, but actually there might just be a few key actions that you could share with us that people can really grasp onto and know, okay, if I'm passionate, if I'm willing to commit my time, if I'm willing to use my talents and my gifts, if I'm willing to 100% commit my life to this, what are some of those simple actions that people can know that, yes, if I plant these seeds, if I take these actions, they will bear fruit and I will get results, I will obtain my chief desire. What are some of those actions you've seen in your life, in developing your business, that seen other people uh, implement as well? Oh, thank you, Jeff. You know, one of the things I really love about Nikan is, is this idea that uh, it's, it's very predictable. And if you have a dream to be really successful in the Nikan business, you want to have a dream that is realistic. Uh, as an example, in England there was a king that was just born. Now, it would be unrealistic for you to dream that I want to be the king or the queen of, of England. That's probably just not going to happen. That's not in the cards. But if you look at Nikan, I want to be a royal diamond or I want to be silver or wherever along the steps. Uh, the thing that I love about th this business is if you kind of examine all the components of it, uh, you're, you're in, co in control of all of those things and by you being in control of them, you can predict the future. And so if, if you look at all of the different aspects of, of Nikan, what, what reassured me when I first saw Nikan was I had met a lady who her whole life was changed because she slept on a magnetic mattress from Japan. And so although I never actually heard of Nikan, I'd, I'd known that lady, she told me her story years earlier, and I was really affected by that. She'd been in a horrible car wreck, she had tried everything, nothing worked until she slept on this magnetic mattress and it was transformed. Well, years later, when I was actively looking for a new opportunity, I came across someone and he told me all about Nikim, and that was, that was my sponsor's sponsor. How I met him was just on the telephone as, as we talked. He said all of the right things. He talked about a billion dollar company from Japan that had a, an amazing track record, you know, fantastic legacy. And I just thought in my mind as he explained uh, that, that this billion dollar company was coming to America and I thought, wow, historically this is a 100% success rate. There's never been a billion dollar company from Japan that's come here and failed. And to my recollection, uh, Nikan was the only billion dollar health company I'd heard of. Uh, billion dollar companies involved in oh from automobiles and cameras and electronics and uh, all, all this other stuff but uh, where, where's the health company and and then this idea that e even back when I joined there was a, a health crisis that was fomenting now uh, we are more and more on a, a collision course we've got to do something and I just thought in my mind this this is the answer and and with Nikan I, I really believe that we will be bigger than Toyota because we have a more impactful product and uh, people spend more on health than they do on automobiles. That's just, just kind of the reality. It just, I, I look at all of the different dynamics and Nikan is just perfectly poised, especially right at this moment, to, to really do everything. And so, so basically the own, 
only unknown factor in the equation of success is you. What, what are you going to do with it? You know, market, immeasurable products, fantastic, everybody needs them, hardly anyone has them yet, and so, so timing right, uh, uh, perfect. And, and, and you, if you just put in the desire and plug in to experts that will show you the way, because it becomes very predictable. Just identify the basic strategies, repeat them until they become habits, uh, become expert in, in these basics. And, and what are the basics? Day to day, what do you do? Well, it's basically, it's simply make a list and talk to people and, and do that every day. Now, part of the talking to people is, is initially uh, making an appointment and, and going and telling the Niken story. Well, before you can tell the story, you need to learn the story. Learn to tell it well with passion and excitement to good quality people. Do that again and again. Teach that to other people, and, and it unfolds. And one of the things that really helped me a lot when I got into the Niken business is I'd already been in several other companies, uh, 15 years worth. And so when I saw Niken, I thought, Wow, I know how to do this already. And with the help of my upline, who's already doing really well, this is going to happen. And I remember, uh, really, at the moment before Nikan, I had a job I hated. I was in despair uh, financially. We were right near the waterfall of insolvency, just about ready to go over. Uh, we, we, were, we were desperate. And when Nikan came, I just had this this feeling of, 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 of peace. I remember looking around. We still lived in a dump. Uh, still had a car without a front on it uh, out in the driveway because we'd hit a deer and couldn't afford to fix it. Uh, uh, we were uh, up to our ears and in, in credit card problems, everything. But you know what? Down in this hole, I was happy because somebody had just handed me a rope. <laughs> and so I knew I was going to get out. And, and so what I like about Nikan is it's a track. Uh, to run on, and uh, basically what you want to do is, is uh, call your, your sponsor, your, your active upline, the, the people that are in the game doing it right now, and, and just have a daily conversation with them, and then uh, start building your business by, by going out and sharing the story, demonstrating the product, get really good at show and tell. Uh, Nikan right now has just relaunched uh, uh, a, a, an approved business building version of the esteemed 21 club. This is perfect. Uh, get involved with that. Learn how to do it and make a decision. I'm going to I'm going to do a 21 club and if you do that and just run with it, it it'll happen. It, it will. If you've got just a, a reasonable attractive personality and, and just the desire and plug in, you, you, you can do it. You don't have to be some special genius with super talents. You can just be a regular person that has a love for people, uh, a reasonably attractive personality. Take a bath once in a while. You'll be be somewhat attractive. The most important magnet in you can is, is yourself. Uh, you want to be attractive so you can attract people. And then just to go out and look for a few key people that you would love to have as friends anyway. And and Nikan, we talk about the Nikan business unit, and that's to have a few customers and then just basically three three people. Now, when I got into Nikan, I was kind of thinking in four. I, I wanted four people and teach other people to have four. And I, I guess that's how I became a royal ambassador, if you know the parameters of that, is, is that's based on, on four uh, groups. But, but basically, you can, you can pretty much go all the way to the top with just three really good people. And, and if you go out and sponsor three people, chances are they might not be the three that will take you there. You want to sponsor enough people so that you have three really good people. How do you know that you have three good people? Well, I think uh, they, they want to have all of the stuff that you've been talking about, Jeff. Uh, just a burning desire, a singleness of purpose, passion about this, be willing to pay the price and, and wanting to go to work. How, how I look at that is uh, I, I tell people I want you to be one of my key persons. And so uh, how I will be able to gauge that is if you call me. You know, if I have to call you and you never call me, you're probably not one of my key people. And the whole part of the business is action. People that succeed are people that are they're people of action. They, they go to work. And so uh, make a list and, and, and let's talk to a few people. And so the, probably the first question I would do uh, with a new person is I would say, you know, 
if, if, if you really wanted to run with this and go all the way, it's all about building a team, and of all the people you know, if you could just say one name, who's the one person that you would want to have on your who, who Who do you know that you really believe would be really good in, in this business? And I just look at them with a smile, expectantly waiting for them to give me a name, and usually they do. And then I kind of flesh that out. I say, well, t tell me about them. Uh, how, how do you know them? What, what do they do? Uh, how long did they do that? And then I get the name and we call them and I'll just say, hey, uh, as an example, Mary, this is Dave Johnson. I'm on the phone with your friend Jeff Eisen. Uh, do you have a couple of minutes? And then I'll say, hey, Mary, the reason we're, we're talking is because just a moment ago, Jeff and I were discussing uh, a, a business and I, I don't have any idea if, if this is the right time in your life or if this would even be a good fit. But in discussing business with Jeff, I said, you know, in this project that we have, if we needed to include another person, who's the one person out of everyone that you know that you would want to work with in our business? And he gave me your name, Mary, and that's why we're talking to you at this moment. And actually, this is not something hypothetical. We really are uh, looking at business. And... If uh, you're open to it, we would like to get together and just show you what we're doing and uh, invite you to, to join us. Just based on what Jeff has told me, I would like to meet you, and, and we do need some help. And usually at that point, uh, they'll let us talk to them. And at the very least, uh, we, we just got to talk to, to Jeff Isom's very favorite person, which is always a pleasant experience, meeting really good quality people. And we shared... Uh, I, I believe some some sunshine and good cheer because uh, it's always fun to compliment people and that is a compliment that we just gave this person that they will probably remember all of their life. Think about that. Someone called you and said, of all the people I know, you're the one I want to be in business with. And then we just do that over and over again. Of course, the second person we call, I don't say, uh, well, uh, we thought about who we want to have in business and, and, and you're second. Or, or, or you're 11th or, or whatever. Uh, after we do the first one, uh, we just say, I asked Jeff, of all the people he knows, who's the one person he'd want to have on his team? And he gave me your name, and that's why we're talking to you. So we let everyone else assume that they were number one. And uh, it's just a lot of fun doing that. And, and you just do that over and over again. And with, with this thought that uh, we're just looking for people who are looking for us, we're, we're doing something that's very comfortable, uh, if you're doing NECAN properly, you're not ruffling any feathers or making anybody mad. It's just a, a fun uh, sharing and showing and telling uh, of, of the product, the opportunity, looking for people who are looking. And my goodness, why this is such a good time is there's a lot of people in despair. They're, they're looking for something to believe in. They're looking for uh, a way to put their energy into something that they feel assured that it'll be there rather than just uh, hoping, uh, maybe against hope, that this corporate uh, thing that they're putting their trust in will reciprocate. And, and uh, we're all realizing that uh, you know, putting your faith in corporate America right now is, I would say, pretty much insane right now. They've, they've given up us on us. We, we probably should give up on them as far as hope for uh, a, a career and long, long term. It, it's... Uh, Kind of, kind of scary out there, and I think the answer is ownership. Get into something that you own, and NECAN is the greatest track to enter into ownership. Well, we've looked at three steps now. That last step, action, is so crucial, and you gave us lots of good specific plans, Dave. I really like the idea of keeping in touch daily with someone who's a leader in your group, letting them know what it is you're doing, making sure that they understand what it is that, that you're involved with and what's going on in your life. And then this idea of contacting people. It's just so important. It doesn't matter what business is you're in, what profession, contacting customers. Brian Tracy, uh, listening to one of his CDs, he said, if you want to double your sales, double the number of people you're talking to. That makes that's, sense. <laughs> that's the key. Often people get so caught up with, oh, I've got to say it exactly right. I have to have the perfect pitch. And yes, words can matter. But if you don't talk to anybody, it's not going to matter what you say. If you want to double your sales, 
if you want to double what it is you are receiving, double the number of people that you talk to. Really crucial. So those three ideas, identifying your chief desire, coming up with what you will exchange, your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your knowledge, your passion, what you will trade for that chief desire, and then finally coming up with a specific plan to implement that value that you're going to add, how you're going to improve others' lives so you can obtain that financial freedom, that significance, that meaning for your own life that you're looking for. The final and last idea then, once you've gone through these three steps, is to create a statement, a statement, a written statement that outlines exactly what your chief desire is, what it is you're exchanging, what those gifts, qualities, talents are, and what the specific steps you will do to be deserving, to be ready to receive that chief desire. And then you read it. You read the statement out loud, believing, knowing that it will happen, thinking about it passionately as you read it, and then you do it morning and night. Often I'll have people say, well, they do it during the day as well because it makes them feel so good to focus on those things they truly want in their life. That's something that I've helped people to do, to use the law of attraction in their own life to create focus statements. And if that's something somebody would like to do, I'm happy to offer a free coaching session to people to help them to actually write a law of attraction statement. It can be very, very powerful. And if someone would like to contact me, they could email me at jeffisom at gmail.com, J-E-F-F-I-S-O-M at gmail.com, or they could give me a telephone call at 801-899-0004, 801-999-0004. I'd be happy, Dave, to offer a free coaching session to anybody who wants some help because sometimes it can be initially, if you've never done one before, a little bit of a challenge, but to write a law of attraction statement that they can then use on a daily basis to help grow their business, to help grow and find that chief desire that they're so passionate about. Because the law of attraction works. I know you've seen it in your own life. It absolutely works. And having, having a coach makes all the difference. Everybody that's really successful, they, they have a teacher. And so I, I can definitely recommend Jeff. Uh, just all, all the little things I've done, whether it's play the piano, learn how to ski, learn how to dance, uh, uh, learn how to build a business, anything. Uh, I, I've been blessed with mentors. And you you want to have a mentor, and you can have more than one. And along that line, some, some of my mentors I've actually never met. In fact, I, I'm still learning from some of them, and, and they're dead, as an example, Napoleon Hill, or, or many of the other people. Jim Rohn, uh, we lost him a few years ago, but I still have a lot of his recordings on my iPhone, and when I go for a walk, or I go to the gym, or ride my bike, or something like that, uh, I, I have these in, and I'm going for a walk with Jim Rohn, or Brian Tracy, or John Maxwell, or all of these other people, and recommend you do the same, because one of the greatest things I ever heard was this uh, statement uh, by Charles Tremendous Jones. Uh, he said, where you'll be five years from now, it depends on basically uh, the books you read, the people you associate with, what, what you listen to. Because again, we become what we think and we can direct our thoughts by uh, just reading and doing all those other things. We can direct our lives by directing our thoughts. What a, what a powerful idea. What a, what a golden nugget that can change your whole life. And so if, if you want to be successful and you can, I, I would recommend listen to something good every day. Get a good book. Read something. Do not watch TV uh, before you go to bed. Uh, I hope you don't have a TV in your bedroom. Uh, just read something good. Say your prayers. Go to bed. Don't, uh, don't watch CNN constantly, negative news. There's nothing really good on TV. It's, it's just a vast wasteland. Uh, it's worse than that. It's a cesspool. Uh, uh, some, someone told me that uh, the problem with America today is, is just the statistics, that, uh, that the average home in America now has uh, actually over two bathrooms, but the average home today has over five television sets, which is conclusive proof 
that there's more crap coming into the homes than leaving. And so uh, change that. Uh, get get a library. Don't don't get a TV. <laughs> Well, Dave, thank you for letting me participate with you today and discussing the law of attraction, how people can use it in their lives, in their business. It absolutely is a key essential to success. Napoleon Hill, under the direction of Andrew Carnegie, knew that some of the most successful people in America got to where they were in whatever field it was because they used this law of attraction the things they thought about most of the time and a focus statement can help you to think about those things you want to draw into your life. So figure out what your chief desire is, what you will exchange for that, and the specific plans to make it happen. Thank you so much Dave for letting me talk with you and with everyone about the Law of Attraction today. It's a pleasure Jeff and also the Law of Action because yes. that's, that's the great thing uh, that, that defines success and, and not success is uh, that's probably one of the most definitive things is, is uh, not just attraction uh, but action uh, so so go get busy and, uh, and enjoy the life that you're going to create sure love you guys and go make a difference we need you to be men of, and, and women of action take care